That's right, Sarah Jane. 37 pages. We've been waiting almost six months for it. And here it is, Sue Gray's report. It takes us, us all the way across the events uh, from May 2020, at the height of the pandemic, through the easing and then the second lockdown, all the way through to April 2021. It gives us a narrative about what happened and the conclusions. And really, Sue Gray comes up with three big things. The first is all about the culture of drunkenness at the heart of Downing Street and the top of Whitehall uh, during the pandemic. Let's start in June of 2020. Now, this is a leaving do for somebody at the Cabinet Office. Now, this event was attended by the then Cabinet Secretary, most senior civil servant, Mark Sidwell, his deputy, and the head of ethics who brought a karaoke machine. Sue Gray said the event lasted for a number of hours. There was excessive alcohol consumption by some individuals. One individual was sick. There was a minor altercation between two other individuals. So a fight in the heart of government during a pandemic is extraordinary. And she then takes us through events all the way through Christmas, where there were uh, secret Santas and uh, uh, more drunkenness. And the, the behaviour really seems to get worse. So let's fast forward now to April the 16th, 2021. And let's hear Sue Gray's account of what happened at that event, which is a leaving do for James Slack, who was the Director of Communications. Those present were asked to leave the building of Number 10 by a Number 10 custodian or security guard. A number of those present drank excessively, she says. And then a number of individuals gathered near a child's swing. Now, that child's not any old child. That is Boris Johnson's son, Wilf. His child swing and slide in the garden and damaged it by leaning on it and playing with it. This was noticed the next morning and reported to number 10 staff. So you can see how over time, it wasn't the behaviour got better, it actually got worse. Now, the second big conclusion that Sue Gray's allows us to draw through the course of the 37-page report is that they knew what they were doing. Look at this. This is another director of communications arguing with the most senior official in number 10 about the Bring Your Own Booze Party. He says, well, I won't applaud the gesture, but a 200-odd person invitation for drinks in the garden of number 10 is somewhat of a comms risk, a PR risk, in other words, in the current environment. And Lee Kane goes on to say that he warned Martin Reynolds in person and so did Dominic Cummings. Sue Gray couldn't find the records of that. But you could see that um, there were warnings. And then when Martin Reynolds, the most senior uh, official in number 10 at the time, uh, uh, was wrapping up the event and messaging a special advisor in number 10 um, about a story uh, that the media had, he said, oh, that's a complete non-story, but better than them focusing on our drinks, which we seem to have got away with. Got away with was the view of the people in number 10 at the time, and Sue Gray helps us understand that. But then the other thing that this report does is it goes into exactly what the position of Boris Johnson was through it. And he, she doesn't link him to the decisions of the senior uh, officials in number 10. So that'll please, I think, those in Downing Street quite a lot. And critically, what she doesn't do is investigate what was thought by many to be the most toxic event of all, which was a, flat, um, a party in the flat of number 10 in November 2020. Now, this was the point at which Lee Kane and that infamous advisor, Dominic Cummings, left government and there was a faction in number 10 delighted that he'd gone. Sue Gray began investigating this earlier this year and she starts to write about it in her report. She said, well, the event began in the flat at six o'clock and five special advisers attended and the Prime Minister joined them at eight o'clock and there was food and there was alcohol and the discussion carried on late into the evening. So was it a party? Well, that's where the detail stops because she then goes on to say, I stopped investigating when the police took over the police decided that they weren't going to investigate or issue any fines, and here we have it. Following the Metropolitan Police announcement on the 19th of May, I considered whether or not to conduct any further investigations to this event, but concluded it was not appropriate or proportionate to do so. In other words, the potentially most damaging event of all wasn't ultimately investigated by Sue Gray because the police decided no fines were necessary. So what does Sue Gray conclude? Well, again, another reason why there might be some cheer in number 10. It sounds as if she's going to be quite damning. The senior leadership at the centre, both political and official, must bear responsibility for the culture that she sets out across all those 11 months. But then she goes on to say that in January she made some suggestions and I am pleased at the progress that's being made in addressing the issues I raised. In other words, she is saying that, yes, it was bad, but the changes have been put in um, course she is happy with. So she doesn't seem to be suggesting any further action is necessary. And upon that judgment, I suspect, Sarah Jane, you will get many Tory MPs saying that is enough for us to say Boris Johnson should stay.